giant hospital and we're about to go inside to go talk to an amazing doctor. His name is Dr. Scott Phillips. He has his own practice. It's called Alamo Brain and Spine and he's a neurosurgeon. So I finally get to interview him and ask him all the questions that I know you guys have. So, here we are. Alamo Brain and Spine, Dr. Scott Phillips. Let's go inside. Hey. Hello. Hey, student Dr. Doctor Rivera. Nice, nice to, to see you. Through. Thanks for coming to my office. Let me show it to you. What are we doing here? <laughs> well, I tried to get it to match. So then we would do the vitals here, take the history, and then do the exam. all the questions about neurosurgery. Okay. How did you come up with Alamo Brain and Spine? So I chose Alamo because we're in Texas and you have to pick something that is identifiable with Texas. And then the brain and spine part was actually carefully thought up. Um, a lot of people don't know that neurosurgeons do spine surgery. Um, so I wanted to have spine in the name. And also uh, neurological, neurosurgical, um, it's a simple word, but at the same time, people also confuse me with a neurologist sometimes. So I wanted to just say Alamo Brain and Spine. I'm a, I'm a brain surgeon, I'm a spine surgeon. And okay. it's right there in the name. Yeah, awesome. So have you always lived in Texas? No, I'm originally from Kentucky. Oh, okay. So, so what was life like growing up in Kentucky? Um, it's a nice place to live. Yeah? Um, do you have family? Do you have a, a mother or father in the medical field? No, I'm actually the first I'm actually the first doctor in the family. Okay. How did you come up with the idea that you would want to be a doctor? Well, um, first I came up with the idea that I wanted to be a psychologist, and then I realized that I really wanted to be a psychiatrist, and then I realized that I had to go to medical school to do that. So it wasn't until college that I uh, figured that out and uh, decided to enroll in the, in the pre-med courses. Wow. Uh, what is a day in the life of a neurosurgeon like? Is it as glamorous and amazing as everyone thinks it is? It's definitely, it's definitely not. So there's, there's a couple different categories. You have like um, outpatient, inpatient. So in an outpatient setting, you're going to see patients in your office just like every other doctor. Um, from those patients, as a surgeon, you identify which patients have a surgical option. And then there will be other days where you actually go to the operating room and operate. Um, on an inpatient basis, um, you're going to get consults with people with maybe more acute need. And so um, you're going to see patients on an inpatient basis and decide whether they need to stay in the hospital or not and if they need to be followed or not. And then there's, and then there's call. So if you're on call, depending on the level of, of the, trauma, um, the trauma level of the hospital, you know, you may be on call for emergencies. And that is the most fast pace. Um, it can be. I mean, it's, things are calm until there's an emergency, and, and then that's when you kind of activate. Do you enjoy the outpatient aspect of neurosurgery? It's good to have a mix because, you know, when there's an when there's emergency on your hand, they need an operation. You basically go to the operating room like immediately, and that's it's it's uh, it can be uh, exhilarating sometimes. Do you feel like neurosurgery works really well for someone who wants a family? You know, I've I've chosen to do it in a way where um, you know I get to go to the soccer games. Um, but I do miss things also. So, you know, I, and I know that. So I, I try to plan it out in a, with a, in a balance. And so my kids know that sometimes I'm not going to be there, but they also know that other times I will. And so um, it's possible. So a lot of us aspiring doctors who are females really look at these specialties and think, um, since there aren't a lot of girls in them, you know, 
it seems a little bit daunting, but um, have you had any awesome female colleagues who um, filled the role of a neurosurgeon just fine, if not awesomely? So you're right. There are, and this is, this is kind of a known problem for, or a known disparity anyway, in, in many professions, and it, it goes outside of medicine and to you know business um, but it, the same is true for surgical surgical um, specialties and also neurosurgery so in my program there was um, I never got to meet her but she was uh, a few years before I got there and she was known as one of the best residents that ever came through there I never got to meet her the question as to how that is I mean that is a deep question I mean this is a this is a, a, a question for a sociologist you know how did it come to be like this um, all I can say is that you know, neurosurgery, medicine, surgical fields, I think we're, tr we're recognizing it and trying to be somehow open-minded and kind of change the biases. But it's certainly a problem that, 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 that you or I didn't create. It's something that has existed before. And so I think just now we're getting awareness. And then with awareness, you know, those biases are, are hopefully kind of fading away. Do you have any advice for the abundance of students that would love to be in your shoes? My advice is to you know, get the good grades, but make sure you're enjoying yourself along the way because your days of youth and all your free time, believe it or not, you actually have a lot of free time right now because you haven't started a residency yet. Enjoy your free time and enjoy your summers and enjoy those free times. Enjoy the time that you have because if you're successful in what you're, in, in what you're um, pursuing, it will happen so quick. And, you, and then once it happens, you're even more busy. So you get into med school and then now you're now you're really busy. When you get into residency, you're even more busy. And then when you get into your private, your, your, your practice after that, you know, you do have some customization, but you are, you're always on call, really. I mean, if my phone, if my phone rings right now and it's another doctor, I'm answering it. So you, you do sacrifice things. So I would just say enjoy, enjoy the free time that you have along the way and do the hard work uh, when it's time to do the hard work. Make sure you get the good grades. So I just wanted to ask one final question to kind of sum up the whole experience you've had with neurosurgery. What is the best and worst thing about being a neurosurgeon? Um, there are a lot of things that are, there are a lot of things that neurosurgeon and really any specialty, you know, you're going to hate. There's certain problems that you really are not fun to deal with. Um, I think the, so I think that the best thing about neurosurgery, um, two things, one, uh, you know, we, we didn't talk about the trauma call, but, but trauma call is rewarding because you have to make split, de split second decisions and your outcomes are, are usually immediate. And they're not always great, but you're, you're, you're acting in the best interest and, and a lot of times you can do something that really made a big difference. The same goes from um, on a regular problem. So my favorite thing is, is doing an operation that has immediate results um, again, we do mostly spine surgery, so there are some procedures, not all, that are um, are curative. Like someone has a, a leg pain or an arm pain so for you years, can you can essentially cure it. And so I've had people in tears tell me, I can't remember the last time my leg didn't hurt because it's been so long. And so that's, I got chills right now. That's, that's, the, that's a fun thing. That's, that's the fun part. Thank you so much, doctor. It was such a pleasure. Okay, thank you. Thanks for coming <laughs> It was by. such a pleasure talking to you, and um, thank you so much for letting us see your office. It really is amazing, and it's, like I said, it's great to see how far you've come, and you really have made such a great name for yourself. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for coming with me to Alamo Brain and Spine so we could talk to the amazing Dr. Scott Phillips and enter the world of neurosurgery. I hope that this answered all of your questions about the field, and as always, guys, I will see you in my next video. Goodbye, everybody.